Just a little over a week after being elected, there is still no shortage of hostility towards the Labour Party's new leader. Now, one member of the military's top brass has reportedly joined the ranks of Jeremy Corbyn's opponents. In an interview with the Sunday Times, an unnamed general said the army would not support Corbyn if he were to become prime minister. A high-ranking official also warned that there would be mass resignations if Corbyn ever pushed through his anti-war policies and downgraded the military. Well, the unnamed general's remarks prompted headlines of a full-blown military mutiny under any Corbyn cabinet. The Labour leader's strong opposition to war was one of the main policies of his election platform. And in moments of clamour and moments of fervour, decisions are made, go here, invade there, bomb there, do this, do that. Tragically, wars don't end when the last bullet is fired or the last bomb is dropped. Remember those that suffered from nuclear testing and say it is not necessary never again. And also say that we, as a society, will make our contribution to a nuclear-free world. Why instead are we going into yet another war in a region full of natural resources that the West so covets, using arms that we've sold to every regime in the region, proposing to sell yet more arms, more bombs, more wars? Well, the ruling Conservative Party has branded Corbyn a threat to the country's national security. The statement came from Prime Minister David Cameron and was echoed by the Defence Secretary, among others. This election shows that Labour is now a serious risk to our national security, to our economic security and to the security of your family. Well, earlier I spoke to Simon Hardy. He's left Unity's membership and communication officer and he says the military's reaction is an attempt to discredit Jeremy Corbyn. Throughout history, there's been plenty of examples when quite popular political leaders who are advocating policies against the interests of the rich and powerful um, have been threatened by institutions in that country. So I think that uh, it's something that we should definitely bear in mind. A policy against the rich and powerful. Actually, this is a policy against our security, isn't it? The Conservatives have got it right. He's a threat to national security, Jeremy Corbyn, if he wants to reduce the military's power. No, I don't agree with that. I think this is all part of the background mood music which has been playing since Jeremy Corbyn uh, looked like he might win the election. And it's all part of this attempt to delegitimise Jeremy Corbyn, if you listen to any of his speeches and the things that he's saying, he's talking a lot of common sense that a lot of people agree with. There's this unending war in the Middle East. We're spending absolutely billions on the military. There's plans to renew Trident at the cost of 100 billion. Well, there's a million people in Britain using food banks. We have to be absolutely clear what our priorities are. What's happening in the Middle East now means that we are under threat, aren't we, by a foreign entity, ISIL. We do need an army, though, don't we? But one of the main uh, reasons that I think Britain as a country is under threat is precisely because we played such an aggressive militaristic role in the Middle East. If you look at other countries that have not been involved in the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, for instance, um, they have not been targeted by um, terrorists or people that are... All right, but uh, in defence purposes, we do still need a military here. Well, I think... In today's age, uh, you could look at dramatically scaling back the British military because it costs so much money. If you are looking at spending uh, all these cuts to the public sector that are going on, I think a lot of people agreed with Jeremy Corbyn's message that the army could be dramatically scaled back. And I think we need to re-look at the entire role that Britain has in the world. Well, during the Battle of Britain commemoration ceremony last week, Corbyn refused to sing the national anthem. His critics branded the move unpatriotic and disrespectful of those who served in the conflict. Well, going underground, host Afshin Rattansi spoke to RAF veteran and author Harry Leslie Smith, and he says it's unreasonable for people to have taken offence. Why didn't you take offence to Jeremy Corbyn? It's a ridiculous assumption, actually, because, like I said, we, we fought the war for democracy, and democracy was also demands is freedom. You, 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 you can follow your conscience. Uh, this is part of our freedom. Are we going to be uh, accused uh, of, of every time we, we, we do something which uh, someone disapproves of, but is actually a normal reaction for for us, uh, we're going to be accused of being unpatriotic. The Tories are very, very disturbed that Corbyn is on the scene. He, he portrays uh, great difficulty in the future for them unless they get rid of him now.
and that is going underground and you can watch that interview in full online at rt.com.